First thing that you're going to want to do is change the name of your project. I'm going to call it Racer. I'm going to delete the cat because we don't want to use this in this game. We don't want to use that sprite. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a background. This is going to be the track for the first level of the racing game. So to do that, I'm going to click on Stage, then click on Backdrops, and I'm now going to create the actual map which the car is going to race around. So the first thing you want to do is to change the background color all to one color. You can keep it white, but I'm going to make it green using the Paint Bucket tool and fill it like that. Then I'm going to go to the Paint Brush tool, change the size of it, change the color to black, maybe make it a bit bigger, maybe make it a little bit smaller, something like this. And I'm now going to just draw the track that the car is going to race around. Obviously you can create the track whatever way you want. Let's bring it back together like that. So now you see we've got a simple track which the car is going to race um, around. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create the sprite for our car. So to do that I'm going to click on sprites and I'm going to paint a new sprite. First thing I'm going to change the name of the sprite to it's going to be red car. The game will eventually end up having two different color cars so I'm just going to call it red car from the start and then I'm just going to create a simple square. I'm going to fill it in red. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color to red and the inside to red. I'm going to click on the square, I'm going to make it fill the inside, I'm going to draw the rectangle, sorry not a square, and then I'm going to get the paintbrush. I am going to resize the paintbrush, I'm going to draw on some wheels. Remember we're looking down on the car, it's a top down racer, so we're going to see it from above. I'm making the wheels grey just so we can see it on the track, because obviously the track's black. If we made the wheels black you wouldn't see them. And maybe you want to have spoiler on the car, obviously, make it go faster. And I'm going to put on two lights at the front just so we know which way the car is facing. So at the minute, it's a very rough background, a very rough car, but it's not really that important at the minute. We can always go back and change the actual graphics once we've completed the engine for the game. Now at this point, you'll see that the car is, I'm just going to center it. By clicking on the set costume center button and click around about there. I think that's in the middle. Now obviously the car is much too big for the track. I've drawn it big because it's easier to draw and create the car whenever it's bigger. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to scripts. I'm going to set a script which is going to put the car somewhere around about here because that's where I want the, the race to start. And I'm going to make it so there's a suitable size so it can race around this track. So I'm going to go into me the script for the car again, making sure you don't add the scripts to the stage because you don't want the stage to move. Click on the red car. First thing I'm going to do is events. I'm going to say when the green flag is clicked, which means when the game starts basically at this point in time. We want something to happen. I'm going to go into looks and the first thing I'm going to want it to do is I want it to be a certain size. So I'm going to say set size 2, which is down at the bottom. I'm going to say Let's try 50%. That's obviously going to make it smaller. Still too big for this track, I think. Let's try 25%. Green flag. Maybe still a bit big. Let's try 15. So I think that's a suitable size car for this track at the minute. You can always change it. And whenever you start adding the controls, you might have to change the size of the car or make the track slightly wider, depending on your game and how it actually plays. So for me, that's fine at the minute. Next thing I want to happen whenever the game starts, obviously the user is going to be moving the car around the track and we're going to have to tell the game that whenever the game starts the car has to be in a certain point on the actual track. To do this we go to motion. The easy way to do it actually is to drag the car to exactly where you want it and then if we go inside motion and select go to, 
it's automatically going to pull the location of the car at the minute and I'm going to say go to and put that in click that on there now for green flag the car is always going to go back to that same starting point so the next thing we need to think about doing is adding controls to the actual car so that it can move about and there's a couple of a few different ways we can do this you could use a mouse to control the car around um, or we could use keys the arrow buttons to move it around there's lots of different ways we can do it in this one i'm going to show you a couple of different ways you could do it and then we'll eventually get to the way which i think works best in this type of game so again we're still on the car and again we're going to say control or sorry events and the simple controls using scratch usually would be something like this so when the up arrow is pressed i'm going to go to motion and i'm going to change y location by 10 i'm going to duplicate that that's going to obviously make the car move up you can see that's all for controls for carriers and game we are going to make it a lot better in a second just want to show you the different options you've got minus 10 whenever we press down so it means we can now move the car up and down i'm going to change that sorry the down arrow green flag it so we can now move the car up and down obviously the car doesn't really move like that but it's just what we're doing at the minute i'm now going to duplicate that right arrow is going to move it to the right so we're not going to use change y by 10 we are going to need to use change x by 10 i'm going to duplicate that put it in here and i'm now going to say when left arrow is pressed i want to change the x value of the car sprite by minus 10 which is going to move it this direction on the screen obviously we know we've got an x-axis run across um, the scratch console zero zeros in the, in the middle when we change x by a positive value it moves to the right negative value moves to the left and with y it's the same when we change y by a positive value it will move up the screen and when we want it to move down the ways we're going, we have to change the y value by minus number it doesn't have to be minus 10 i could change these all to two and minus two that just means the car is not going to move as much it's still going to move but it's going to move a lot smaller so you can see moving forward that's working okay at the minute but if it comes to this corner and I try to stay around the corner you can see it gets slightly messy so these controls aren't really suitable uh, in this style of game but these are controls which might work in other games so i'm going to do slightly different and for this i'm going to use so you think of a car in real life what it's got is an accelerator so it moves forward in a certain direction whenever the person driving the car um, is accelerating so to do that we are going to say events and we're going to say when the game starts and we're going to use a forever loop because we always want to check during the the application of the program when the game has been played is something happening so i'm going to say forever so at all times during the game if this is happening i want the computer to do something with the sprite i want the sprite to do something so forever if and i'm going to use sensing and i'm going to say if a certain key is being pressed which is here i'm actually i'm actually going to use space for the accelerator so if the space key is being pressed i want something to happen so we're going to go to motion now we could use move 10 sorry we could say change x by 10 and that would work at the start so if i try that now and show that would work it'll move across but then when we start trying to turn it around it'll get slightly messy so a better way of doing it we want the car to travel in the direction that it's facing so rather than say change x by 10 i'm going to say move 10 steps that basically means that this sprite will go in the direction that it's facing so and i'm going to slow it down slightly i'm going to try two steps green flag that now you can see the car is moving possibly a bit slow but we're going to we can change that around after and as well as that now i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to say if another key is being pressed i want something else to happen so it's important with this if that it doesn't go inside here it has to go underneath the first if statement uh, and still inside the forever forever loop 
And what we want to do now is we don't want, so when the, let's say Z and X for handiness, so when the Z button is being pressed, which is down towards the bottom, I want not to move any steps. I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rotate it. So left is going to be rotating anti-clockwise, which is this one. At the minute, if I just green flag it and show you what happens, it's probably, sorry, that's the Z button, probably moving a bit too fast. So I'm going to change that down to about 5 and see what that's like. Left arrow, sorry, Z button. So that might be a more sensible sort of speed for the car to be able to turn um, in this track. That might be slightly different in your game, depends on the size of your track and the size of your car. I'm now going to duplicate this again, see if we happen to do it. Drag all the bricks in again. And I'm now going to change the Z to X. So when the X key is being pressed, I want something to happen. I don't want it to turn to left or anti clockwise, I now want to turn it to the right. And I'm going to make sure that this turns to the right the same amount of degrees as it turns to the left. So now if I green flag this, what happens whenever I press the space key? The car starts to move around the track. It looks a lot more realistic than using the first set of controls that we used, which were the up, down, left, right. So it doesn't look natural for a car to move like this. But this one is a lot more playable in this style of game. So that's the first part, is just creating your sprite creating your first car, creating your background and having some simple controls. Now one thing that we need to do now before we finish this part is if we green flag this game and go back to the start you can see the car is facing the wrong direction and we don't want that to happen. So what we need to do at the start whenever the game runs is we need to tell the car to face a certain direction. So we're going to go to motion and we're going to try point in direction 90 degrees. So when the game starts we set the car to that size goes to that location and it points in this direction which should have it pointing across the screen now obviously if you start your car going down the ways you would have to change the value of this depending on which way you want the car to face um, so that's the first part of the tutorial creating a simple background creating the car and giving it some control so it can start to move around the screen so again you could do it in lots of different ways you could have it following the mouse round um, but you this up, down, left, right and changing X and Y doesn't work in this type of game because it's not really a set of controls which works um, for a car moving on a track. Whereas the space Z and the X rotation works a lot better. So now I'm just going to tidy up. I'm going to delete these ones that I use as an example. The, the up, down, left, right ones by right clicking and delete because I don't need them. I'm just using that as an example. And I'm going to pull the controls um, towards the top just so you can see them.